Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about the reactions of esters with hydride nucleophiles. It's pretty likely that if you have talked about the reactions uh, that go into the synthesis of alcohols, that you have already covered the reduction of esters with lithium aluminum hydride. And so you know that while lithium aluminum hydride could, you know, goes through the aldehyde as an intermediate, um, that the aldehyde is reactive with lithium aluminum hydride. My brackets. Right? Aldehyde is reactive. And so we get further reduction of the aldehyde to the primary alcohol. And this reaction generally creates two alcohols because the uh, one side of the ester is a leaving group as, as an alcohol. Now, uh, not only is the aldehyde reactive, but actually the aldehyde is more reactive and the ester. And so it's tough to envision a a less reactive, more selective uh, reducing agent It can stop at the aldehyde. But in fact, one such exists, uh, and the way that it works is, is pretty interesting. So there is one that works, and it stops at the aldehyde, uh, and that reducing agent is, uh, let's see, um, people will do, can be, can be written this way, Isobutyl di. Oh, there's a two in here. This is this is diisobutyl aluminum hydride. Aluminum hydride. That some people will abbreviate as DIBAH, diisobutyl aluminum hydride, or DIBAL, sometimes with or without an H. Um, I tended to grow up calling it DIBAL, but but DIBA is just as uh, uh, as legit. And this reaction, if kept cold, can stop at the aldehyde. And so this is the point where you should really stop and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. The aldehyde is less reactive. Or, I'm sorry, the aldehyde is more reactive towards nucleophiles. The ester is less reactive towards nucleophiles. How does this work? Right. The ester is less reactive towards nucleophiles, but the ester is more reactive than the aldehyde toward electrophiles. The extra pair of lone pairs on the other oxygen increases the electron density of the ester carbonyl group by resonance. And diisobutyl aluminum hydride initially is not A nucleophilic reagent initially. Uh, like BH3 and other neutral reducing agents, the aluminum has an empty orbital and can accept one more bond. And so the way that this reaction starts, and I'm going I'm just going to arc to a no. 
I'm going to not focus on what these R's are because in theory there could be other uh, similar aluminum hydrides. The fact that it's diets and butyl, it, it just happens to be a common one. That we get this nucleophilic attack on the aluminum and it is facilitated by the other oxygen in the ester that can donate electrons by resonance. Um, aluminum, it's got a hydrogen and two R groups hanging off of it. Now the aluminum is negatively charged, which is what we're used to it being in order for the hydride to be a nucleophile. And so now we can have this hydride nucleophile come in and, and do its business nearby. Hydrogen there, oxygen. And in fact, uh, under the right sorts of conditions, this might be uh, sort of what we might call pseudo-stable or kinetically stable, uh, meaning that under the reaction conditions, this might not fall apart and lose a leaving group until you do the aqueous workup. And this thing kind of looks like an acetal or a hemiacetal. Uh, and so under aqueous workup, acidic aqueous workup, we should expect it to come apart into an aldehyde and some aluminum stuff and the alcohol. It is worth noting that if you elevate the temperatures above, say, zero degrees Celsius or maybe even lower temperatures, uh, disbutyl aluminum hydride will start reducing aldehydes and ketones. But because the mechanism has changed up a little bit due to the, uh, you know, the initial electrophilic character of the reducing agent, and you have this thing. So, you, so sometimes you get it's like the aldehyde never really forms. And, you know, the aldehyde is a poorer nucleophile. than the ester. So we have an opportunity to be selective because the aldehyde is less reactive, but it's less reactive in a different way. In the next video, uh, I'm just going to remind you about the reactions of esters with organometallic reagents, which is a pretty good chance you've seen before, but I'm going to remind them, remind them of you, remind you of them. Thank you for watching.